Welcome to Northwest Outdoors. I'm Willie, and today we are gonna go to Coffee Pot. Coffee Pot Lake is about 12 miles northeast of Odessa as the crow flies. Uh, it can be a really great fish. Uh, David told me about it. He fished it last fall. Uh, we're out in my backyard in the patio. It's summertime, and it's that time of year so to get us all excited i'm going to show you the first clip from coffee pot enjoy i'll be right back ah yeah oh yeah Woohoo! oh my yeah oh yeah <laughs> oh my goodness. Coming in, coming in. Oh, coming in. Nope, nope, nope. Oh, oh, oh. Was just wait until I got my net. That's what happened. I had to go in and get my net. And I'm kicking back out to meet up with Alex. And bamo. Bamo, bamo. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Oh, this is a nice fish. Really, really strong. That's what I love. Oh. Okay, it's coming in now. Oh. Boy, can you see that rod bending? Ugh. Powerful, powerful. <laughs> you know, these modern reels are, are built so they're silent and I just don't get that. I like that sound. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Oh, this fish is not wanting to give up. Here you go. This is our first fish of the weekend. Mwah. It's official. We got our first fish. We've been fishing for about an hour. And we're loving it. Absolutely loving it. That was a nice fish, probably 15, 16 inches, but really deep and meaty. That's, that's what we like. Nice meaty fish because they're strong then. And the water temp is right at 48, 49 degrees. And so they're, it's perfect. Everything's perfect. We got blue skies. We're loving it. All right, back to fishing. Welcome back. Hope you enjoyed that clip. There's going to be a lot more to come. Anyway, the fly I'm going to tie today is a variation of a variation. The first variation was from the pumpkin seed. And I, tie, I started experimenting with different colors and I, I tied this up and it seemed rather unlikely that it would catch fish, but I did tie two of them. And I was at Dry Falls the same weekend, uh, the first weekend I went to uh, Coffee Pot. Um, and I just tied it on and it worked fairly well at Dry Falls. So when I got to Coffee Pot, I still had that tied up and I saw, thought, well, I'll just go ahead and try this fly out and see how it worked. I kicked out of the boat launch and within 10 minutes I had three fish on, uh, broke off, lost one. Uh, so I figured, well, I got one more left. And a couple fish later, I lost that fly as well. Uh, I didn't have the right materials with me to tie it. I did have orange beads. All I really had was, was orange beads and dubbing. So I went up to the car and I came up with this fly and tied it on. And within a couple of minutes I had fish on. So, and then also I went to 3X. Um, 4X, I, they were hitting so hard that they were snapping my 4X. So anyway, I'm going to uh, show you this fly. I start with a Dairiki 700. Let me get it in there. 
uh, and it's uh, 1x strong, 4x long. Sounds like a good title for a song. Um, my orange bead. Uh, I love these orange beads and they're very difficult to find. I might try to find them at Shipwreck Bead, but so far the only place I've been able to find them is Canada. Fortunately, living in Bellingham, Canada is a hop, skip, and a jump over the border. And then I am going to be using um, three different dubbings. A black STS. Uh, another, another one is called uh, Bleeding Leech, so it's black with red in it. And then I'm going to go to uh, fuse some fusion dubbing, some orange fusion dubbing. So, let's get started. Uh, gonna start with a black thread. Also, there it is. I am going to use black marabou for the tail. Okay. Oh, one thing I should say if you haven't noticed, I'm in my backyard. It's summertime, or feeling like summer anyway, it's spring. Got to get some scissors while I'm talking. You're going to hear probably dogs barking and my waterfall running and um, kids and dogs and Oh, it's just wonderful. Anyway, <clears throat> I also, in the tail, like to put a little bit of this uh, UV in. I don't know if it really helps. I did do some research and I discovered that fish can see UV. Uh, from a distance, it's pretty blurry to them, but I think it adds just a little bit more to attract them. So, first thing I do, grab a view few fibers of the UV and I really like this blue it's really to my eye it's wonderful hopefully to the fish's eye it's wonderful too but I had so much luck with this pattern Okay, get rid of this tag. I forgot to cut that off. And I'm gonna get a little black marabou. Now, sometimes I'll use the the really straight. Uh, feathers and sometimes I, I kind of like the the more fluffy feathers I like that fluffy feathers um, I don't know if it makes a difference either way if you do use the straighter feathers make sure you cut that little tip out right there just like that so, now when I uh, go and use the fluffy feathers, what I do is I just hold them and then I just cut along the shank of the feather. Give me a big bundle. Then I come back, grab them. And then once I have them, kind of comb them out, lay them on my fly. Now, one thing I forgot to do, and I always do, is I forgot my smart glasses. Remember the smart glasses from my other videos? My, I love my wife. She, she'll sit there. Willie, why don't you put your smart glasses on? And so I put my smart glasses on, and I always say, E equals MC square. <laughs> and we always laugh. It just never ceases to be funny. Okay, so I got T 
tail, UV, everything's working out just like it should. So, now what I did on the, um, the original fly is I just like, if you go to and reference the pumpkin seed, you'll see how I put the hackle on. Uh, so I wanted to emulate that with dubbing. So I actually made a dubbing loop. And I just set it aside. So now I'm going to make a second dubbing loop. And this is for the body. So as I'm making this, I'm realizing I forgot my uh, spinning tool. And so it seems like it's a perfect time to show another fishing clip. So watch the fishing clip. I'll be right back. Enjoy. Come on. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Woo. See, get him in here. Whoa. Yeah. Whoa. Get them over here. Oh, yeah, these are strong fish. Oh, you can hear that wind. Facing right into the wind now. Ah. Yeah. Woohoo! Ah, let's see if we can get them around here. Get them to at least where our back's against the wind. This fly I'm using, I had it tied in a different version, version and uh, I had two of them and I lost both of them early on. So I went back and kind of faked it and looked the same. And it's successful. Okay, let's see if we can't get him. Okay, there he is. Boy, these are powerful fish. Oh, got him. First fin fish all the way. This is about the fifth or sixth fish I've, I've caught. And you can see they're not that big, but boy, are they powerful. Well, I'm gonna get him back in the water. All right, let's do it again. Ah! Oh, yeah! Oh, that's a big fish. Oh. oh man! Yeah, that is a big fish. Oh yeah! Woohoo! Right near. Whoa! And whoa! Woo! Oh, LDR. Okay, I'm back. Got what I needed. Maybe a little extra. Maybe more than what I needed. So. What I'm going to do now, move some stuff out of the way so you can see. I'm going to layer um, my um, dubbing. And the body, I make it with the STS. I really like this STS. Uh, it's a great dub. It's also the Fusion dub is wonderful. Um, just really wonderful. So I'm going to... I started using these dispensers because it's really nice and it seems like it feeds out just enough the right amount. So as always when we're doing a dubbing loop we want to kind of make it as sparse as possible. So I'm going to lay it down here so you can see. 
just how sparse it is. Make sure, let me grab a little bit of my tweezers here. Okay. And I take and Okay, that looks pretty good. I can see through it. I want to cover about two inches or so. Now I'm going to take the bleeding leech color, and it's basically black with some some red um, um, tinsel in it. And I'm going to do the same thing. Sparsely lay it out here. Looks good. I'm going to get my first dubbing, my second dubbing loop I made. First one, yeah, the first one's back there. And, okay. Get it all ready here. Get a little dubbing wax. Whoopsie. I'm clumsy. All right. Now I'm going to take my spinning tool, get my dubbing, and I'm going to lay my dubbing right in here. Try to let you see it. It's kind of hard to lay it in and set it up so you can see spread it out make sure it's thin okay it looks really good now what I like to do make sure it's even what I like to do is I like to take and just trim it just a little bit and that's going to make your body fairly even. Okay, that looks good. You can see it's pretty even. It's about maybe three quarters of an inch or so. Now spin that sucker up. Okay, magic happens. Let me do this. Get this out of the way. Okay, so <clears throat> forgot to get my brush out. I love these brush. These brushes are the best. Going to brush this out just a little bit. We'll have to brush it again, but. Okay. Build this body out. See my two inches that I, I laid out of just about right for this particular hook. Move that out of the way. Wrap that around. Okay. Captured that. Let's go ahead and now I like to put a little half hitch in here just to hold it. Okay, there we go. Now, we are going to do our second dubbing loop. And I use the Fusion Dub. It's an orange. It's, they have a lot of different colors of orange. This orange is very close to the color of the bead. And this is going to be extremely sparse. And I'm, what I 
was doing was I wanted to mimic that hackle. And so again, laying it out on my paper. You can see how sparse it is. Because if, if it's too much, it's going to kind of override it. And I don't want to override it. I want it to be accent. It kind of, it almost is like a halo. So let's go and pick up our first dubbing loop that we made. And find our wax. Put our spinning tool in. Grab our dubbing. Probably have too much. The great thing about dubbing is, is you, once you get it captured, you can adjust it. Okay, again, I'm going to take and I'm going to trim it so it's even. So, now what I'm going to do with this once I get it spinned up, once I, I have it spun up, I never get tired of watching that spin up. Okay, I'm just going to dress it a little bit, pull off some of it. Now, I want this, like I said, I want this to mimic my hackle. So, I'm going to get it started. And I'm going to take and just... Put it down like, oh, maybe four or five wraps down the fly. Let's get it caught up in here. Wrap a few wraps around here and tie it off. So, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and I want that body to be filled out. So I'm going to kind of poke it a bit. Get it started. When you're doing this, you got to be careful not to uh, hit, especially if you're using a, a feather, not to hit the shaft. So you got to watch it. Okay, now we're going to take, I'm going to take, I should say, my brush, and I'm going to comb this out. Looking good. It's 
So, there you have it. I went to Coffee Pot two weekend, two different weekends. Um, the first weekend, uh, I was there for just the day, and it was blown really, really hard. I think it was probably 30 miles an hour, as you can see from the clip. It was, it was fierce. When the second weekend I went, the first day, it was pretty darn nice. The fish were small. Um, I think that in between the time I was there, they, they planted. So we had a lot of small fish. Had a couple large ones in between. Uh, biggest fish I hit was probably in the 15 to 17 inch range. Uh, but strong fish. It was a great weekend. Uh, so I'm going to show you a few more clips and then I'll be back. Oh yeah. Oh, oh, this feels good. Oh, boy, these fish, they're not big, but man, are they powerful. Ah, oh. oh, I was just getting ready to, whoa. <laughs> Rewind my tape. Okay. Kind of keep them high here and see if you can't get them in the net. Ah! Yeah! Woo! For sure. Woo! Okay, let's see if we can get this one in the bucket. Okay, in the net. Ah. Okay, here we are. This is a really nice fish here. This is my second fish in 10 minutes of this size. Oopsie, here we go. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed the show. Thanks for supporting Northwest Outdoors. And I'll see you again soon. Till the next time, good fishing to you.